Yeah, so, so what can we expect to see? Now it's getting a little bit cloudier, isn't it? As, as no, I won't read your future, lights. but if you've got <laughs> good weather around towards the end of the month, uh, there's a chance to actually see a little bit something special. So the moon shows us all the different phases. We talked a little bit about that, uh, but there's the opportunity if there's a full moon once in a while, there's what's called a lunar eclipse, where the moon sort of runs into the shadow of the Earth. And we'll see a little bit bitten off of that seeming. And that's what we're seeing here on the 28th of October. So it's in the first half of the night when it's starting. It's very subtle. The moon will be very low, but it sort of uh, culminates at around about quarter past nine, exactly, maybe 14 exactly. minutes past nine when we'll see most of it covered it's a tiny bit, bit enough if you want to follow it try to grab some binoculars and the subtle changes of the color and the brightness will be just apparent it's not it's the best. partial as we call it so it's just skimming the side of shadow, the core of the earth but still an amazing thing to see and appreciate how the dynamics in our solar system work and if you're enjoying that, then um, you might be also fond of spotting some other things a little bit further are. away than the moon. I've put in Jupiter, but actually you can spot Venus as well. I thought I'll put in here Venus above the Sherwood Observatory. That's been in the news already with their starting of the building works of a really exciting extension to that observatory around here. So if you've got time, try to get there. But here, Venus is a really beauty to spot in the morning sky. So now at around about seven o'clock in the early morning, you might see it already high up in the sky. So 30 ish degrees above the southeastern horizon. And that's um, our second closest uh, planet to the sun, our neighbor Venus, brilliantly to see. And it's currently at the time where we will call it the Western elongation. So if you got a small telescope and see it with binoculars, just about able to sort of spot that it's a, a phase you're seeing as well. You're not seeing a whole disc, you're seeing half of it just at this time where this phase becomes a half Venus. So really interesting. And I thought I'll sneak in, you can see just above the tree line, something that's called Apophis. So that is a asteroid, nothing so you can see with the naked eye, or even with binoculars or um, a telescope easily at all. I've put that in here because it's actually the target of something really exciting. Um, that's a space probe, a Sirius Rex that has just flown past us and is heading now to this other object. I think I'll, I'll use that opportunity to talk about this really exciting drop-off that this mission has done just on the Sunday. Okay, yeah. This, uh, can I just quickly say, this isn't the one that's going to crash into the Earth, is it? Uh, the um, the asteroid, no, it's one of, uh, Apophis is one of many sort of uh, asteroids that uh, are being followed. The asteroid that uh, uh, is probably relevant to talk about with this mission is Bennu. So what's happened in the uh, several uh, past years, seven years overall, there was a mission called Osiris Rex um, that flew out from here to go to this uh, asteroid. And it's an asteroid that's on a very similar orbit around the sun as Earth. So it's what would be classed as hazardous. It might uh, be in many generations a possible impactor on Earth. So also that means it's really easy to get to. So that mission went there, mapped the surface, landed in a massive pogo uh, uh, stick bounce on the surface, collected 250 grams. I love the media described it as as heavy as an adult hamster, whatever that means. <laughs> and that amount of material was then brought back. And on Sunday, this mission went past Earth, dropped off the sample, and instead of just thinking, that's my job done, headed off to this other asteroid to do some more work. And the sample itself then raced and fell towards Earth, um, only decelerated by a heat shield, then two parachutes that went off, and the thing safely and securely landed on the slightly wet Utah desert soil. And I followed it, and it was amazing. It's not like that it skimmed on the ground or so. It just gently sat down and was upright, in there as if it were just coming out of the lorry to be uh, loaded into uh, the rocket. So really amazing. And it's currently being whisked down to Houston uh, to be now analyzed, uh, split into samples, sent off for further analysis. And it's really exciting because this is material from a carbon rich asteroid that might have brought material in the early formation of Earth to us on the surface. So it holds the building blocks wow. of life itself. And we're wow. expecting really exciting things from that in the future. That is really exciting. Wow, that's brilliant. It's a little bit twisted that they've called it Rex, considering an asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs, but, you know, maybe it's revenge, <laughs> who knows.